If you have to learn only one subject to pass the USMLE, it would be pathology. And if you had to master only one aspect of pathology, it would be general pathology. In this video, I will share with you exactly how I studied pathology in med school and what I recommend you do. The first thing is to get a textbook. A lot of students study pathology and have never opened a pathology textbook. Use a textbook. There are so many review resources available and they certainly can make your life easier. But a textbook will help you understand concepts on a deeper level. In the last video, I said that to become a high value medical student, you need to study during your breaks. Breaks are the best time to read a few chapters of a textbook, especially the first few chapters. In my case, I used the Robbins textbook. I went through it a couple of times and it's magical what a textbook can do to your life. You can use a textbook for references at least if you don't have, if you feel like you don't have the time to read the whole book. But once again, if you study during your breaks, you will have sufficient time to go through a couple chapters or even the whole textbook if you want to. There are other books including the Harrison's textbook, but I found that the Harrison's was rather too much for a student in basic medicine. When you get clinical medicine, maybe you'd find more fun in using the Harrison's textbook. In addition to the Robbins book, you want the Robbins question book. The Robbins question book is a very great resource. Remember, it is important that you practice questions as you study and that question book provides you questions that correlate exactly to what you're studying from the Robbins book if you're using that book and that is very helpful. Even if you're not using the Robbins textbook, every single student I take currently preparing them for step one, when they study general pathology, I encourage them to do a few questions, especially from the early chapters of the Robbins question book before they even go into UWorld. It will help you know what is important and master key concepts. Secondly, use Google. I would give you two websites you must use or you must know. Number one is Webpath, completely free. Webpath is there. You are going to have histologic images. You are going to have a few MCQs from Webpath as well that are going to be helpful for you. The second site you're going to find useful is going to be MedBullet. Now, MedBullet is not completely free, but a good amount of their content is free for you. So when you type on your Google search bar, whatever, osteoarthritis, for example, if that's what you want to study, just make sure you put USML at the end. So osteoarthritis, USML. When you click search, you're going to have this array of um, sites that are going to show up. Search for med bullets. If you don't find it, then type osteoarthritis, med bullets. It will certainly show up. They show you notes. And then at the end of majority of their notes, they have MCQs related to that specific concept. These MCQs would help you master that concept and help you remember the concept in the long term. Finally, take note that when you do Google searches again, that you add USMLE at the end of the search. One of the mistakes students make is you just search for something randomly on the internet and then they begin showing you articles and by the time you get through one article or read random things all over the place you've wasted all your time you realize oh my god it takes so long to study this so whenever you search for anything on google try to add usmle at the end so you get usmle specific resources and in addition use web paths use med bullet the third thing i would ask you to do is to master the basics. If you have not mastered general pathology, there is no point studying any other chapters of pathology. If you have not mastered general path, it's an abomination for you to try studying cardiovascular system or anything else. God forbid that you will do that. You cannot fully conceptualize pathology if you do not absolutely understand the basics. There are times when I let my students take over a week studying general pathology, even if it's a short section. If you understand general parts, you will become a god in pathology. In the Robbins book, it's going to be chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. The same with the Robbins question book, chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. All of pathology, remember this, is basic pathology. Everything you're going to be studying in pathology is basic pathology. The nomenclature might change from organ system to organ system, but the underlying pathophysiology is mostly the same. So once again, Pick up general pathology, the very basic stuff, TNF, alpha, and interleukin-1, and necrosis. They sound very redundant. You must know them. If you understand them, pathology will be the easiest subject you're going to have. Number four is to focus on specific findings. Focus on specific findings. When you study diseases, just imagine if I tell you a patient has fever, nausea, headache, well, 
that could be any disease in the books right but if i said lytic bone lesions you immediately think multiple myeloma langerhans histiocytosis because that description is quite specific so when you study diseases it's important that you know what findings are unique to a particular disease and the description of those findings from as simple as age is to simple descriptions like bilateral hyaluronopathy if you're studying sarcoidosis and i ask you tell me something about sarcoidosis and you say oh people with sarcoidosis who have low grade fever uh, i'll be like oh okay what's low grade fever but if you tell me bilateral hyaluronopathy uveitis erythema nodosum you give me a collection of findings that are sort of specific to sarcoidosis that's what you want to pay attention to when you're studying observe notice the findings the symptoms the presentations that are specific for each disease process you're going to be studying you want to pay attention of course to the age of these patients you don't want to pick kawasaki as an answer when the patient they gave you is a 70 year old man you don't want to pick lung cancer when the question says a 35 year old woman has bilateral hyaluronopathy that would be ridiculous right if you want to learn everything you need in med school and to crush the usmle then hit that subscribe button down below if you are enjoying this video so far click the like button and share with some other medical student that will find this useful the fifth thing you're going to need is to learn common lab values on the usmle just like in a game of chess time is a piece and one way to cut down on time wastage is knowing your labs. Imagine a math student who does not know the multiplication tables by heart. He has to use a calculator for 8 times 8 or 7 times 12. He spends more time on the exam than he would have if he could do these basic calculations. One of the resources that come along with my um, course, the test taking mastery, is a PDF with the labs you must know by heart. And if you have that course, you should memorize those labs, you should know those labs. Ensure that you know the very important lab values by heart. You don't have to go checking for them every single time. It would improve your performance on pathology overall. Finally, I won't end this video without a bonus tip. Practice questions practice questions, practice questions. A genius medical student is usually one that has solved more problems and practiced more questions than everyone else. You cannot practice enough questions. The more questions you practice, the better you become. Many times, the top students are simply the students that spent a lot of time practicing questions and developing mastery of concepts that many others are weak at. If this is your first time with pathology, congratulations on studying the most important subject and the second best subject because neuroanatomy, neurology is the best subject for me. So congratulations on studying the second best subject. I hope you have a great experience with pathology. And if you have any questions, you can leave a comment below and I'll get to it soon. Don't forget to like and share these videos. And until next time, keep your heads up and I'll see you soon.